to build this size of digester, we need 1,200 bricks. We are going to use what, what are known as interlocking blocks because of the advantages of being stronger and much more, more economical in terms of the number of bricks. We use half the number of bricks that we use for, for uh, the fired bricks. And the strength of this is twice as strong. It is four newtons compared to two, two newtons of the fired brick. We have our machine here, which we are going to use for making these blocks using the mixture of, of maram, sand, and, and cement. We are going to use six wheelbarrows of maram, three wheelbarrows of building sand, and one bag of cement. In order to make this, this, this mixture workable, we, make, we, we sprinkle some water. This improves the workability, as well as improving the, the holding capacity of the cement to the, to the maram when the block is made in the machine. We just simply want to make the soil moist but not uh, wet. The water content should not be much because if it's much, then it again increases the uh, adhesion of this size of this block to the machine. We normally use the polythene paper so as to reduce on the cohesion of the soil to the, size, the inner size of the machine. Also, polythene paper helps to make the size of, of the block relatively smooth. We are on day number two. Construction of this structure is going to take eight days. We, don't, we normally don't use a concrete foundation. We normally use mortar because we don't have much force exactly on this foundation compared to the other digesters in that is a spread, a spread foundation. This helps us to save on the concrete and the cement which we would use when we are using the other ordinary digester. The measurements from the reference line and is 232 centimeters. The pit itself is seven feet deep. We use what, what is known as a, a radius stick that controls the radius of the, of the digester and also creates a dome as we go upwards. We would save about 30% of the cost of the original design. It contains 12 cubic meters of manure, of which 6 cubic meters is cow dung diluted with the water of the same amount. This is a renewable system. When we first feed it with the 12 12,000 liters today, we shall continuously feed it every day, in such that it, you know, it will have continuous production. And this type of digester will give us about 2.6 cubic meters of gas every day. When you put up the digester, you are actually trying to save the, the, the environment by saving the trees. The soil that you use for making this is non-productive soil, the one which comes from the pit, the one that we use. So don't, you don't disturb the, the top soil. We are now on day four, and we are working on the construction of the upper part of the digester, which is the gas chamber, which is going to take us through up to the following day, which will be in day number five. On this digester, there is no need for use of, the, of a beam, because these blocks automatically interlock, and they don't have a space in between the two sides of the gas canal, where a beam would be necessary to bridge the gap. Normally you don't need external pressuring because of the stability and the adherence of the bricks to each other. We normally have at least five hooks with him, such that should it be a rainy season, he can use the five hooks towards the completion of this gas chamber. When you compare with the traditional biodigester, a mason normally would have about 30 hooks used continuously from the beginning of the construction up to the end. Because of the interlocking nature of these blocks, it will create a very stable structure whereby we don't even need to use chicken mesh because of the stability of this structure. Today we are starting the construction of, of the expansion chamber of the digester, uh, which will also take us day seven. Computer expansion chamber will, should normally have uh, a manhole cover to avoid any accident that may result from the ununcovered manhole. It's the storage for the gas. And now this expansion chamber on the other side has got uh, an outlet canal. This charges the, the slurry from the digester.
day number eight, which is our final day, under which we are doing the installation of the pipeline and the appliances as well. We are laying the pipeline using the PVC pipes. The advantage with these pipes is that they are not susceptible to corrosion. And we are using fittings of GI so that the, the fittings are strong and leak proof. It has to be inserted into a trench and buried underground so that we maintain a low temperature on it. At the same time, prevent mechanical damage which could occur to it.